women generally are women. Yeah, <laughs> it comes Nothing naturally personal. to us. <laughs> yeah, so we are, uh, of course, Makaran, we are tech writers. We need to get heard, right? We ensure that all the time. <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> we'll continue on our journey back home. So, um, you all are coming for the first time, right? Okay. So, what's your experience? Does anyone want to share anything? So, it's been a good experience. Hi, everyone. My name is Megha and I'm working for Oracle. So I would say it's a good experience, uh, like the TC World Conference, you get to you know, meet so many people, uh, network with them, see what the trends are in the market, and um, it gives you an opportunity, you know, learning different things, and um, certain things that you don't know about, which are going on in the market, <laughs> and um, yeah, so all in all it's a good, I would say it's a good networking experience for everyone. Learning. Something to do with the field there. Um, so let's, uh, so let's make someone talk who has been attending the conferences but very few people know him, Shiham. Will you please come here? So Shiham is from Sri Lanka and because there are not many tech writers there, he comes to India and attends STC conferences. Um. Uh, well, actually, it was my team lead from uh, Sweden who yeah, actually uh, encouraged me to uh, kind of uh, join STC um, and uh, attend the conference because she, she used to be the president, no, I think the vice president in uh, the STC uh, community in Sweden. So, um, yeah, it has been really nice and I have learned quite a lot many things and uh, we have um, uh, kind of implemented a few ideas that I take from here and yeah. It's been a really nice experience and I, um, I see a few faces and they say hi and it's always nice. So hope I can come next time as well. Thank you. So there are some faces who keep coming here. I keep seeing them. Um, I'm sure we take one idea or the other uh, every time we attend one conference. Uh, there is so much of brainstorming that goes in. Um, okay, by the, t uh, by the way, um, if it starts, let me know, okay? I don't want to kill time unnecessarily. So, um, so, so many people keep coming to STC conferences. So, if, um, I mean, I, I would like to uh, know uh, from one of you, uh, one idea that you took away from STC conference and uh, tried to implement it at your work. So. Is there something that, you know, inspired you and made you do things, experiment something in your work because of a conference or a learning session or even an article? Please come, Namrata. Hi everybody, I'm Namrata. I work for Schneider Electric. So uh, this is my second time at STC conference and people who have been uh, in the previous conference would know that Mukda won the best presentation last year. So, uh, and her presentation was on minimalism with MIPI. It was a very nice presentation. Yes, <laughs> you would know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that is something that I really took, uh, you know, as a learning because her presentation was really nice. So, uh, is it still there on the web, on the STC? So, if you guys can go back on the West STC site, just uh, download her presentation and see because it was so simple. You will be surprised the way she used MIPI as an example and put it into effect with respect to technical writing. So, you know, as writers, we generally forget that minimalism some, is something really important for us. So, uh, really, the presentation was really nice and that is something that I completely took forward. Because I didn't see <laughs> it. But uh, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we come here and we see things and uh, subconsciously they register and, you know, when you, uh, you know, when you're at your work, you know, you, you kind of think of what you've seen and, and you know, you actually imply uh, or implement those things. Um, one thing that, you know, in this conference is interesting is uh, the use of Scrum, the lean model that uh, there was a presentation just some time back and I think that is coming in a big way. So it's great if, you know, we can all integrate into that model and work with that. So that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from this conference. So who wants to present the next time? Yeah, to decide. Next year, next year. I can't commit anything now. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
Somebody, yeah, sure. <laughs> so anybody has, um, this is the skill that I want to develop or? So uh, my basic skills are HTML5, CSSP, and JavaScript. So that is what I'm planning to do. That's nice. Anybody else? See how our educational system makes us a slave to answers, not questions. Do you see that? Great, we are done. <laughs> okay, a couple of uh, announcements. One is about the STC India salary survey. So it will be published very soon. It's there with Rajdeep. As soon as that is done, he's going to share with us the link where you can access it online. Right? So the moment it gets published, I'm going to inform you. Second is, uh, this time we are uh, trying the video recording so you can see a camera and I hope I'm getting recorded right now. And uh, this will try to edit and this takes some time. So it may take something like three to four weeks. Uh, also there could be technical issues like getting background noise and so on. And that's the reason I was very particular about passing, passing on the mic to the person asking the question. Otherwise the question does not get recorded. So I would request you to raise your hand so that I can rush the mic to you and then maybe you can ask your question. So the, in the video it gets recorded, right? So we are trying to record the videos and we are trying to do this in all the rooms, which also may mean that you may be able to see the other sessions happening in the other rooms that you are missing right now. You may be able to see them on videos, right? So STC India has already created a YouTube channel for videos. And in fact, the first videos to go up there were the pre-con, not pre-conference, the regional conference videos from Pune, for which uh, Mugda was the manager. So, uh, I think we are ready. So, uh, Saurabh. So, I'm going to start the story right where Vikram has left. He, his last point was about providing the content on a mobile framework, right? And I'm going to take that story one step ahead and I'm going to talk more about how as a technical writer we can, we can take and leverage facilities appearing from a single sourcing content on mobile devices. A little about me, I'm Saurabh Kudeshia, working as Senior Content Publishing Manager with Microsoft R&D India based in Hyderabad. And I'm responsible for developing Microsoft Dynamics CRM content for three different products within the CRM family. And I'm responsible for teams in Switzerland, Denmark, and US and as well as in India. So other than that, while I devote my free time in addition to what I'm doing as a technical writer, I devote my free time working for Unity, Blender, working as a game developer, designing experiences for people who doesn't know anything about technologies. And you'll find some of my exciting products or application hitting the Windows market very soon. So let's take a journey and before that, a mandatory disclaimer. All copyrights, trademarks are duly acknowledged. Any comments, opinions expressed in the sessions are purely mine. Microsoft has nothing to do with that. Any data that I'm using here to visualize or emphasize my point are taken from various resources and different sources, and I acknowledge all of the specs. So what is this mobile story all about? And why it is so interesting that the entire paradigm of content writing is now shrinking itself into this mobile factor. So there are multiple things. Number one, we cannot deny that there is something called as mobile phenomena happening around us, right? Even though we can talk more about delivering content, we, are not, we cannot ignore the fact that mobile is driving the maximum number of phenomena as emerging trends and emerging technology in the market today. We talk about online traffic. Look at the way online traffic has been generated compared to what it was last year a significant increase of 10% and, and it is still growing. Most of the topic including, uh, I would say like 51% 50 of the topic is of online traffic is generated by the mobile apps. So again, one more reason for us to focus on this story. And most of the fact is that 50% increase in the mobile activity is because of the social phenomena. People are accessing their social profiles, people are accessing their social stories over different type of mobile devices, including phones, tablets, smartphones, tablets, and whatnot. So we cannot deny the fact that if we need to push our content, if we need to get engaged with our users, we need to get the story straight. So 
mobility is soon becoming the new normal. I mean, it's very soon you'll find that within your content strategy, you'll figure out that, well, I don't need to only develop documentation in PDF file, or I just don't need to prepare a CHM file, or I just doing in the same way, right? Why don't we just say, okay, we have a mobile content, you know, and what they're showing is just a PDF file that can we read on a mobile Adobe reader? Now, that's not a mobile content, by the way. 90, sorry, 905 million users will have tablets. 67% of the people who use smartphones will have access for, for their office networks, for their office purpose. People are increasingly become more mobile, right? I want to bring my own device and work on it, and your infrastructure, your company infrastructure should provide me that flexibility. Of course, you know, we have security concerns associated with that, but that gives us a very good flexibility, right? I can work on my content right now without even having to go into the office for any feeling next. And most of the time, and in fact, I would say like 40% of my work, which is very usual routine work, can now be done using my mobile phone. Right? Approvals, this and that, replying to the mails, accessing things, providing digital signatures on documents, stuff like that. And more applications are driving that phenomena because now people, when ask for something, you know, you have a provider who can develop the solution for your content or for your service, and that you can host on your mobile platform. What type of devices do we use? And this is an interesting reading, right? Very interesting reading. We are simply moving away from multimedia feature device to a smart devices now. The growth in the smartphone division is happening globally, but you know the development, the rate of development is different in different segments, right? In different reasons. So if we see a global phenomena here, you can see that 48% of the traffic coming from the smartphone. And this is going to increase even more when we have cheaper smartphones, cheaper solutions, and people are interested in buying more intelligent solutions because they want to get connected with their stuff. They want to do more stuff with the, out of their smartphones. And the smartphones will become the future's laptop, right? I mean, we don't need a laptop at all. We, everything can be done using mobile phone. In fact, now I can even present my entire presentation using my simple smart device because I have a connectivity. I, ha I have the tools device to do that. So this has increased the amount of the content, number one. It has also increased the involvement from all factors to improve the significant amount of usability phenomena, the way we present the content, the way we deliver the content. And by the way, I don't even need the document only on Lumia 520. I want that on Samsung phones as well. I want that on Android experience to way content. I also want the same experience on my laptop. I also want the same experience when I visit your website. How can we deliver that content? Because it's like, wow, how many devices do we have right now? How many form factors do we have right now? How can we cater to everyone, right? Somebody's saying, okay, I have Lumia 520, I have 800, I have this and that, and I want solution catered to that particular form segment. We are going to talk about that, but for time being, let's take a look at how the mobile enabled learning assets are capturing the market globally. Business services consulting constitute 33% of the learning assets available on the mobile platform. And by mobile, I mean tablets, tablets, phones, smartphones, feature phones, or whatever phones you can say, right? Even your simple text format uh, phone that only can send SMS, you know, people now asking for, okay, can I have some solution here? Well, all right, sorry, you are a very small segment for us. We cannot deliver more meaningful content to you. One interesting phenomena, and this is always confused, is how should be distinguished between the two experiences. Like I said, you can have your document in Word, convert that to the PDF, and open in a document, and you can call it, wow, we have a mobile help, by the way. No, it is not. Or much better, I mean, you can take another step. You can place a hyperlink where people can click and go to the, your website, and you can say, by the way, we have a mobile help. It's not, because we are talking about navigating to a particular storage of content using a particular device, using a particular channel. In this session, we are talking only about a complete experience on that particular mobile device or in a particular segment, right? So if you try to use that phenomena, if you try to see that, okay, I have website and people can use it, people can access it on mobile phone, this is not going to help you out. 
because different factors are involved in that. Your mobile devices are unlike your laptop, they are smaller, they have different interaction model, people are using it in a different format. So you need to base your content around that. Poor data collection, an interesting pitfall. I was just talking to one of my colleagues who was about to develop a mobile content for his documentation. And he asked me the question, how many devices should I support? How can I support that? And I asked him the same question, what kind of device a user is using actually? Why should I develop a content for Samsung X model when my data shows, my data collection shows that nobody is using that phone for accessing the data? Or why should I deliver a particular type of content for smartphones when I know that people are willing to go to the website and download the thing and learn from there? Right? So my entire content strategy evolves around what kind of data do I have about my people? what type of behavior do they have and what is driving their behavior right and how I can consolidate their behavior into an experience which is more content driven but user centric. One size fits all interesting phenomena sometimes the concept of single sourcing is taken into a fact that okay now we have single source content so we, I, can create a, I can create a chum file and a PDF file out of the single content and my user can access it on mobile phone, tablet and tablet, so this is a wonderful idea. How many of you have the content which is in PDF file and accessible on mobile devices? Please raise your hand. One, two, four. Others are sleeping or what? Okay, so a lot of you, why? And it's an easy phenomenon, right? I don't care we are using my content, I just have a PDF file it's up to you, you're right, you need to zoom in, pinch and zoom in and you can still read it. And by the way, don't complain about the big image that I put in that PDF file because I thought it was very interesting. But I never know that you will be using that file onto your small, small screen which is just the size of the file, just the size of the image. Right? Or that interesting video which I thought would be an interesting phenomena for you. How can I tell you are opening that on a small screen which even doesn't talk about the resolution that I'm expecting for that video? Right? We never talk about this because single sourcing, single content strategy, big words, we forget about the simplicity part, which is the underlying principle of all the content development strategy. No one size fits all strategy. Please avoid that if you are moving away from an experience which is totally mobile driven. Take a look at how we'll show how we'll look take a look at how the people are using mobile to access content on application and we see that this is entirely different from the way the way people are using the, the content on the web. Lack of intelligence. What does that mean? I mean, are we talking about an intelligent uh, help content that pops up in front of you as soon as you start using the application? I'm talking about the content intelligence. I'm talking about a phenomena where if I'm struggling with something, your content should tell me, you know what, I think this other topic you should be used for. That can solve your problem. Right? How many of you remember the famous or infamous Microsoft Word Clippy? Or the my favorite, the professor, buzzer professor, right? You click it, start doing something, but the moment you start typing, it sends that I think you are writing a letter. Let me help you with this. You click on that and you have a pre-formatted letter in front of you. Just type it, fill it and forget about it. What kind of intelligence is that? And what kind of similar intelligence can we bring in our mobile content experience? Right? Does anyone sh has a chance to look at the latest uh, Lumia help? I can give you a brief demo about that. Common learning experience sorry we are not going to take a talk about this people who are reading the content on web has a different learning expectations than the people who are taking a call or driving something while reading the content on the mobile phone these two are different phenomena because they use the product you use the application they use the platform in a different context so your content should be focused on that context only any question Mobile personas, 
highly distracted people very short attention span right because you are reading a you are reading the content and suddenly there is a pop up it says oh your friend has sent you a whatsapp message and you start looking into that whatsapp message and then i look at the message later on and then you oh my god this is an interesting message let me post it on my facebook profile as well and by the way what happened to the content that you were reading what if that is a 50 page long document that you need to scroll and move up and down or zoom in and pinch it up right you keep on zooming and pinching but you never get the context fat finger what is that phenomena so your finger has a size right a thickness that's the fat finger so by fat finger i mean that only certain amount of activities can be done on the screen using your fingers if you over try doing that you'll have a broken learning experience and phenomena right if you make your content how many of you tried clicking and hyperlink on an adobe pdf document on your mobile phone how difficult it is you need to first zoom in the content then zoom in find out where is the link then punch your finger over there right that's an exact ex excellent example of fat finger and look at the way people are using the mobile phones right one finger mostly thumb or holding a phone like this and using it another way right and what are we delivering to them we are delivering to them an experience that requires entire hand and the body inside right this is not going to happening right they use phone in varying situation right i'm standing i want to see my content right here in front of me and then sometimes i found it like okay i'll keep it this way and that way and that way your content should adjust to that layout responsive designs right or maybe you know tomorrow you'll have some new phenomena like shake your phone like this and uh, you know your personal assistant loaded on your phone and start reading your content do you want her or him to read something like why is this document all about xyz user guide version 1.0.0 toc introduction what's new page number 35 no so for that we need to deliver a content we need to design a content that can fit into that paradigm prone to quit and move on how many times you hang around focusing on your content and try to focus on that for 15 minutes using a mobile phone many i i'm sure not many of you like to go with that experience right mobile health should be easier to search and we'll look into this phenomena because now we have requirement to have improved the search you'll find many of the paradigm which were considered a de facto standard in written documentation simply vanished in this mobile phenomena we'll look into this rover search yes i don't want to go through the entire document to find out what's there right i'm simply going to type something which is very fast or relatively and find out the topics which are relevant to my health right this is the mobile paradigm search paradigm faster load time short attention span i don't want to wait for the entire life to get my content loaded right and this is where you need to balance the uh, balance your content in the terms of mobile help versus mobile app if you have a mobile app is faster to load the content if you have something more talk about mobile web so that people can navigate to that and connect to the content and download the latest versions ua web experience we are talking about help that doesn't looks like a help the book paradigm is simply dissolving simply disappearing in this mobile phenomena we want content to look more like a help but behave more like an app and we'll look into some of this example soon take a look at this nokia care and by the way i do have a printed document for nokia health if you want to read and tell i tell you what this is totally different from what we see looking at here because this is a mobile help content you can download the entire help on your phone browse through the videos browse through the content read anything you want it has some nice animation to show you what are the common tasks that you can achieve with your phone by the way animation without word without voice without context without anything else simple pure animation right and 
it's easier to load, right? It's right there. Oops. Anybody try Karina? Cortana? How did you find that? What's so interesting about Cortana? Something, somebody who doesn't even look at you. Humorous, wow. Fun, engaging. And you love to engage with her even though she make mistake with your help. Right? Engaging. Engaging experience using interactive technologies. And I'm sure within the next five years, you'll see some of this emerging health train moving into this phenomena. You type a talk and the assistant will find the help for you. I think Saurabh, you're looking for something because you're struggling with so and so things. Why don't you try our getting started guide to know what this phone has to offer for you or this device has to offer for you. And by the way, I also need, I also understand that you are also struggling with so many things. And you, by the way, you never talked to me before. So let's talk about what you need. Come on. My assistant is telling me what I need to do based on my behavior, based on how I interacted with the application. This is not very far. This is not future. This is here. Content on mobile devices, extremely tight focus on the context of the content. Shorter is gone. No more short content. We want ultra short, ultra refined content. Update your phone. Period. Khatab. That's that's, that's the title. Click here and get all the information. And when you open this topic, it will just show you that update your how to update your phone. No more interesting thing like prerequisites, browser connectivity, find out if your browser support this or that. That will be another topic. In a very small chunks of pieces, chunks of information that you can digest within your short span of attention. Mobile health is driving that phenomenon. Most essential information first and secondary information should be deferred as long as possible. If you want to know more, click here, you get that information. And that's the basis of progressive analysis, progressive disclosure. Show me more, I want to know more about this. And when you're going in that paradigm, you need to be very clear that only the most important content goes into the help. Feel free to cut every single detail on that help that you think is useless. Be extremely ruthless. Self-contained, which means that you don't have to navigate to some other topics to find out what is this help about. Yes, for more information, you can navigate to other help. But for later on, you should be able to predict what a reader should need and what it needs. And that process should be self-contained. When I say change the battery, just talk about change the battery. Nothing more than that, where to purchase the battery or anything stuff like this. That should be moved on to the other experience altogether. If I want to know more about this, I can progressively disclose that information, find out that information and move on. Short topic names. Anybody try this wiki encyclopedia on mobile phones? Try opening wiki on your mobile devices, any one of them. That could be a window phone or an Android revisions or anything like that. You'll find a different experience. And why it is different? You'll find that most of the website are now evolving to have a different versions of their content based on the devices that you're using. That's adoptive design based on the user's profile. In terms of terminologies, please avoid using terminologies which are device specific. Click. Nobody clicks on mobile device, by the way. People tap. People pinch. Right? So if your help says, click here to know more about how you can change the personalized screen, screen of your mobile phone, even though people can understand what you're talking about, but it's wrong. It's misleading. Anybody tried using this kind of common technologies across mobile devices while developing the content? And how are you using that? 
you are trying to combine the two experiences together right or maybe using a some kind of context sensitive thing that takes place changing the variable formats right information on demand don't place the information just because you have it when people need it they'll demand it information and you'll probably need to present that information we're talking about agile framework simple content architecture that is scalable so we need to make sure that we are extremely process oriented in terms of how we develop the content and the strategies in built right from the process when we start evaluating the feature specification understanding the requirement of the features it has to begin really early avoid large graphics if people want to look at the graphics you can use conditional text feature so that your graphics can appear in one format while it can be disappear or hidden in mobile formats you can also target multiple device using multiple versions of your image so that you can have better resolution image and smaller device or preferably just avoid it and place it on a different website that people can navigate to in terms of table use conditional text and probably it is a good idea to avoid tables and reconfigure tables in mobile content and try to reconfigure your content using collapsible text again that is a good idea to evolve your progressive disclosure content so that people can click into that say and find out if they really need that information or not toc hierarchy no more than two toc label right is <laughs> we know that we have very complicated toc but we need to redesign our health content so that it can cater to only two labels short topic names look at the way the lumia health guide is there for your safety basics triple and messaging camera that's it and it is specific to output right you'll find out that uh, the same help is available on different versions or different product versions of lumia but it's slightly manipulated to fit that context formatting collapsible tags and i'm very good fan of this uh, responsive fluid design which which is big design and you know based on your size screen resolution it fits itself or collapses itself or expands itself to fit the content within the screen resolution of the fine framework so make sure that you are having a fluid design use conditional bullets and buttons for prominent links instead of using hyperlinks which are very easy to miss index searches index are gone completely gone in mobile paradigm search search and search make sure you have a better and good search engine that can follow up through different conditional parameters so that people can have more opportunity to search content in different scenarios add as many videos as possible it's really a good idea involve or point them to the youtube view side or whatever site you are using software engineering optimization a big buzzword and the question here is how we can utilize or improve our content using these techniques it doesn't mean that we are simply presenting the content on mobile help or different format without optimizing them yes they are going to be inbuilt with the software engine optimization techniques so that people can easily find that wherever they are trying to look for the information whether through a mobile browser or through a desktop browser or even through the within the app format right and you should have a framework that can collect the data how people are arriving your information right are are people ever having your accurate information more in terms of application perspective or they simply is looking for information using another search engine and driving it your hitting your targets that's the content there's a good website here and you can they have like 200 emulators on the market you can test your content here is a good one and find out how your content is behaving or responding to different uh, different uh, outputs or even different designs it's a very good site by the way keep try that one recap why content single strategy single sourcing strategy you need to understand the environment and constraint while some of the paradigm that we have remembered for single sourcing content in desktop paradigm is not applicable here it has to evolve make sure that you take mobile content strategy as soon as possible because then you can better design your content around that strategies and always take guidelines in terms of how the way it should be written and what is the best practices to evolve in terms of content any questions at the end of the session yes thought about uh how how it's coming out on the nokia lumia device and across devices mm -hmm. now i'm very interested because in a in a in a in a past lifetime i've 
developed uh, documentation for mobile devices, specifically for Windows Mobile 6.1. 6.1? Yeah, Bistock RFID Mobile. Okay. okay. Right? Now, uh, I, I need to understand what tools you're using. And I, I was using just HTML, but mm -hmm. this looks like it's more than that. And what, what tools are you using, what technologies are you using? So tools for the website designing or the content designing? Uh, for, for this specific, I mean, are you, are you, are you publishing through a specific uh, engine or are you using a specific standard? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what tools are you using then? So there are two things, like, uh, first of all, it's, you have to decide whether you want to publish your content as a mobile app or not, right? If you take into account the Lumia 550 help, right? You can download the entire help as an application and it will reside on your phone. That's one paradigm. You have to design an app around that, right? The other paradigm is you basically host the content, right? And your content should be responsive, uh, responsive enough to find out, first of all, which devices it is using and what paradigm is need to be done. So it, it's like more like an XML format where you can define the single sourcing context and find that, okay, if the device is this, this is the paradigm that I need to, I need to use. You can define your characteristic of few design. For example, if the screen resolution is there, the layout should be like this, the structure should be like this, right? And you can use your contact uh, conditional text to define that if a browser is a mobile browser, right? This content should be applicable to the output. This content should not be applicable for the output. Thank you. One more question, just one more question. You asked one question in the morning. <laughs> Um, sorry if I'm a little nitpicking, but uh, when you're saying you have to design the content for uh, different interfaces like a uh, desktop or a laptop or a mobile, uh, you are saying you have to change the design and the display, not the content itself. Ex apart from the little things like instead of click here, you say tap here, mm -hmm. the other content remains the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is a display that when, uh, if you want to read more, you tap and read more. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking what you were uh, actually giving here was more of a design and display rather than, you know, uh, doing the content differently itself for the mobile. In Actually, fact, uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll just tell you where mm -hmm. I'm coming from because we are doing something mm -hmm. where we are actually designing something which is basically for the desktop or laptop mm -hmm. and it has to also display in a tab and then on a mobile. Mm -hmm. So the philosophy we are coming from is that a person starts reading on a laptop, then he, uh, you know, continues on a maybe a tab and then he is going somewhere so he just continues reading on his mobile. So the content has to remain the same. Of course, the display will be completely different in all three of them. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to know if you are referring to the content itself or just the display and uh, design. So I'm trying to mix up the two steps together, two extremes together. Number one, you cannot have a content which is not, uh, which not, which is not considered a design constraint on that, right? For example, designing uh, let's say for example you already have a content, right? You want to change only the display part of that while remaining the entire content similar. You don't want to go for the progressive disclosure, you don't want to take the advantage of responsive with... Mm -hmm. So doesn't that require any design changes? Uh, no, no, no. no, no. I have a request. Can we take this offline? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think we are totally out of time. I'm going to request Nandini to hand over a momento. Thank you.